Welcome to San Joaquin Spotlight, a public affairs program featuring conversations about life in the central San Joaquin Valley. This program is brought to you in partnership between KFSR 90.7 FM and CMAC Fresno. I'm your host, Sevag Tatiosian. Today, we have attorney Tom Boyajian with us. Tom used to be a Fresno City Councilman. Tom, welcome to the program. Thank you. Well, I should say welcome to the studio. It's but a beautiful studio. You're familiar with this studio well, from course. your council days. Talk about your experience. Well, when I was on council, they got this building together, and it became a really good museum. I mean, there were some tremendous exhibits here, like the dinosaur exhibit was really awesome, and used to have a lot of fundraising things here. It was really nice. They did a great job. I'm, I was really sorry when I got off the council to find out that, this, that they just didn't uh, survive. Uh, I think a lot of the problem was they just couldn't keep a director. But they had some tremendous plans. The plans were just incredible. Well, now it's a studio, so what do you think? I think it's incredible. I think, I think it's really good. This is like the Bay Area where you have lots and lots of different channels giving people op opportunities to you know, to be had their own shows. I think it's tremendous. There, I, my wife and I watch some of the YouTubes and stuff, and some of these people are really talented. I know you're talented because you work for me. Uh, so it gives you an opportunity to do something that you deserve to do. I think it's great. So do we, will we ever see Tom Boyajian have his own show? I, I mean, don't know. I don't <laughs> know if they let me. They might not let me. It might be too liberal for him. I don't know. <laughs> so, you know, you mentioned liberal, conservative. But I want to ask you a question. City Council, is it bipartisan? Not really. I, they, they say it is, but it's not. It's all political. You know, people, they vote for you whether you're a Democrat or Republican. Well, most of the time they do that, whether you're Republican or Democrat. It's, it's not. It, it's supposed to be bipartisan. You're supposed to be working for the people, but you don't. Most people are working for vested interests and stuff. What advice do you give people who want to run? I mean, I know that people have come to you and asked you for your endorsement, asked you for, you know, your support and your advice. What advice do you give people who want to run for city council? Well, find out what the issues are in your district and, uh, and be honest. Look for issues and look how you, can, how you can help the community. There are a lot of people out there that do a lot of things. They don't get paid for it, but they are community leaders. and They do a lot, especially in neighborhoods and stuff. And, and, uh, and, and meet people. Go out and meet. You know, we, when I was on council, we did a lot of things with schools and we did a lot of things with entities that, that wanted to do volunteer work. You know. You had to go out there and do and volunteer your work. My whole staff had to go out and work. It's just finding out what the issues in your district are and, and make a difference. But are each, do the issues in different districts come up? I mean, are they the same issues? Well, I think uh, employment is an issue for everything and everything. Pollution is a real issue. I think when I was uh, working for District 1, we were fighting like crazy to get anything because people a lot of times just don't want to, you know, didn't want me to get the kinds of things we got in our district because well, we're we're a district that's, you know, pretty stable and things. And the and the other districts in the out, outer area of Fresno had different int interests too. So yeah, there's each district is different, and, and each one has a different makeup too. Uh, some some districts are a little liberal than the other ones, and some are more conservative. And you have different people, and you have different you have different issues. Do you think that you know there? It's been said a lot that certain dist districts people don't vote. And in certain districts, people do vote. I mean, are, is there a big difference between Somewhat. between districts and who votes? But in in areas of districts too, usually people that are a little more educated vote. People that are interested in the in the in the neighborhood. I had a I ride my bike every uh, Sunday with a friend, and he said, "Boy, there's a lot of there are a lot of council people uh, in my neighborhood." But I didn't open the door, and I said, "Why didn't you open the door?" Because city council is the closest thing you're going to get to government that you're ever going to see. But more people vote in presidential elections, senators, governors, and they don't vote. Even for mayor, uh, when I ran for mayor and I was walking around you know, in, the, in the city in the primary, hardly anybody even knew what was going on. They didn't even know what the, what the, the mayor's race was. So, yeah, it's a, people just don't get interested. And when you don't get interested, your city goes a certain way, and it's not a good way. So, yeah, people have to get interested. I know when we were, we were really fortunate when I ran for city council, even when I had no opposition, we did really well. But um, people have to want government. And if you, if you ignore government, then government's going to do what the people, not what the people want, but what the politicians want. Sometimes people will say, oh, the politician gets elected and they forget about their district. In city council, can the politician do that? I mean, sure. It happens all the time, yeah. But will they get reelected? Is that well, the question? Well, it depends on if people care. 
if you care, it's not going to happen, but a lot of people don't care. It's not something you want to, they don't want to, you know, waste their time on it. They don't think it's important, but it is the most important governmental situation they can get involved with, and they actually can meet their councilman, but they are councilwoman also, but you, you have, when you're a council person, you have community meetings, and you know that. You used to come, you used to have to put them on for me. We'd go into different areas in the district, and we'd have meetings, and some people in the eight years I was on never missed a meeting, and those, those were informative things for them. It also, in the council, you have to understand, you don't come out with all these issues. A lot of the issues are based on what people tell you, what they would like to see, like the lights on Van Ness. You know, that was, a, that was something that Fresno High, you know, a Fresno High group wanted done, and we put lights all the way up and down Van Ness. The lights around Fresno High School, or a bunch of kids came to me from Fresno High School saying, we have some real issues here with safety. And before you, could do it, before you knew it, we had two big sets of lights around Fresno High School. So a lot of times people will come to you, uh, especially with parks and recreation kinds of things where people need more recreation for kids. And, that, and I always found that people always would come to me and do stuff like that, especially I remember when kids would come to me and ask me for a, a skate park. And uh, I didn't know what a skate park was. <laughs> but I learned, and we eventually got a skate park. But that's what you do. You have people come to you, and, and to make the community better, you, you, you do that kind of thing. A lot of times when candidates for city council run for office, they really, really do it because they want to make a change. As a city councilman, is that power there? Can they make a change? If you've got some friends on the council, sure. <laughs> the first two years I was on the council, we had a majority and we could override the mayor's veto. Yes, we could do it. And we did a lot of things, you know, a lot of things. Probably, you know, we got a lot of things approved and a lot of things done. And it was because we had a majority, uh, four to three, and then we could, we could always get another vote if, if the mayor overrode or vetoed what we did. So, yeah, we, you can. You can, you can pretty much go for it. And uh, it's, a, it's an interesting concept, which you can, you can run the city for a while. Do you miss it? I mean, you, when you did it for eight years, you were there, you were passionate. You, you were vocal on the council. I mean, you weren't afraid to butt heads with people. You weren't afraid no to give your opinion. Do you miss it? Uh, I miss the good things, the things you can do, and not the political things. I don't miss the political things. But, you know, like you said, I was pretty lucky. I, I was council president. I was RDA chairman. and I had all the leadership positions, so I was, it was fun. It was fun. But it got old after a while because you lose some of your allies and they, they move on. I had a tremendous staff, uh, and you were part of it, and you can't do anything without a, a really good supportive staff. And all my staff ended up you know, having degrees and getting better jobs and going on with themselves and doing some good things. But, yeah, you can do If you care about this city, you can do a lot. And if you get a majority on city council, you can make this city move in a really good direction. When we were, when we were moving... In the times that we were, uh, uh, the first couple of years on council, the unemployment rate in Fresno was about 7 to 8 percent. We had people working. We built stadiums. We, bet, we, bet, we, built, uh, we built courthouses. People were working, and, and, and that is a really good thing because once you get people working at good jobs, you're going to have a different city. Fresno doesn't have that because mostly what we have is, you know, jobs that are paying 7 and 8 and $9 an hour. We need to find you know better jobs, but that's not for me to do. But we tried. Do you, you were involved in code enforcement and beautification of your district? Is code enforcement important? Some people will say, why even have a code enforcement? I think code enforcement is 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 pretty important as to people that sometimes just get away with things. We had we had people we were we had some people that were very wealthy who just had these rentals in our district, it was sort of insulting, and they were half burnt, and they wouldn't do anything. So we got about four or five of those people to finally do something. And you, especially the vacant buildings, we had a, an area down west in Ashland where there was like five or six buildings that were all vacated. We got them all going because we put a lot of stress on them. In fact, we had, it was really interesting, the Marcus Wesson was living in our district he was living in our district with his, I don't know how many wives he had. Every day we went to code enforcement, every day, and we said, get this guy out of here, get him out of here, get him out of here, and he left. Of course, he went somewhere else out of our district, but we got him out of there because they were really causing a lot of, you know, blight in the area. One, 
one house can cause a lot of blight and lose you lose a lot of value in your neighborhood. Tom, you're an attorney. Did your legal background help you while on the council? A lot, yeah. I, I think I think the legal background was important because one thing you'll learn as a lawyer that anything that comes came before me, you know, on the city council, I researched and I had the tools to research, and that's what I did. And I asked people other than people from the city <laughs> because that staff was not always the city council staff. It was the staff of the administration. So you had to get other opinions. And there's a lot of other cities, and there's a League of Nations. There's lots of information out there if you want to get it. And, and so we were, you know, I was always, I always did that. And you went to law school. You know how much work it does to research things. But it's important to research something and not just give, be given something and say, well, this is the way it's going to be. Well, maybe not. Maybe there's a better way to do it. And you, the area you practice is what? Wills and trusts, probate? Yeah, I do a lot of probate, wills and trusts, uh, evictions. And, of course, I've done a lot of divorces and family law things. I mean, is that steady? A lot of people will say, oh, you write one will and you're done. Is there a steady workload for you? I've been, uh, I worked all weekend. <laughs> I worked all weekend. I think when I was on the council, it sort of hindered my, my law practice because people didn't think I was a lawyer, I think, in some ways. But since I've been off the council, you know, I've, you know, I worked full time when I was on the council, but I can work harder now because I have more time. Do people still recognize you in the district? I oh, remember yeah. when you were a council member, you'd be out in the district cleaning graffiti and We'd get a, hey, Tom, hey, how's it going, Tom, you know, with a peace sign saying, hey, Tom. I mean, is that I don't know about that peace sign. That, made, <laughs> that was your peace sign. Yeah, I, I, I was very lucky. I had a few uh, people who were in the media that always was in my office because they knew that I was frank enough to answer questions. Yeah, I do. I still get it. I get people. Sometimes my wife and I go shopping and she'll get really, you know, like, what is going on? I remember there's times that I'll, I'll go into someplace like Costco or somewhere and I'll get five or six people to talk to me and my wife is standing, you know, in the corner saying, when are we going to get going? When are we going to get going? There are restaurants that we go to in the tower. Yeah, but that's, that's the way it is. That's the way you should be. You should be outgoing. If, you don't, if, you don't, if you're not outgoing, you shouldn't be in government, to be truthful. Uh, that's, that's really a, a prerequisite. And people really like to be able to talk to you and ask you questions and stuff. I know you still get this question when you're out in the community. Are you going to run for something? Will you ever run for something again? I'm too old, Sevog. That's for people <laughs> like you. I'm too old. I, I'm trying to be a lawyer and you know and stuff like that, and and be a decent husband and and ha and have a recreational. You know, I do a lot of recreational things. I, I wouldn't. And I did. I ran for mayor. If I would have been elected, I would be a mayor right now. So I've I've tried, uh, but um, when you when you're getting close to seventy. Uh, that's pretty difficult. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a young man's game because you have to go to a lot of functions. It's something that you have to go and do. And I did it. I did it. But I was younger. So, yeah, I, I think that if a person wants to make a difference and they have some good ideas and they are strong, they're strong in their beliefs and they really can't be changed by vested interest and money, I think it's a great job. Is there a difference between changing your beliefs and meeting halfway because there will be times where people will meet halfway and negotiate. Sure. Uh, is there a difference between someone who changes their beliefs or, and, or someone that meets halfway? No, I think you can do this. I think you can do it. I mean, if you're going to get a consensus, you have to sort of meet halfway for sure. That's the one thing you do learn on council. You have to, you have, can't get everything you want. You know, there are a lot of times that as a, as a district one representative, you know, if you vote a certain way, somebody will support you from another district. And, excuse me, and there were a lot of people on the council who would do that. And then, of course, when I was on council, the council presidency, the assistant presidency, RDA, was all voted on. So you had to be sure that you didn't go, that you were, you know, you were somebody that could help other people on the council because you were, there, was always a, there was always an election. If it wasn't an election by your constituents, it was an election by your peers. Because you, if you want, if you wanted leadership positions, yeah, you had to compromise yourself to some degree. I don't think you would compromise. I would never compromise myself on, on the really important issues like the environment, you know, clean air, clean water, jobs. It's hard to, because those are the things that really are important. Crime. Um, those are the really important issues in Fresno. Jobs is probably the most important issue. When you have jobs at a lower rate of unemployment, you have less crime. Uh, and if you have, if you're spending your money on trying to help kids before they become adults, 
in the Parks and Recreational Department, especially in the parks, uh, statistics show that when you have those intermediaries in Parks and Rec and you have jobs, that unemployment is, is less. And that's what you have to do. We have to, we have to help the kids that are coming up educationally and things of that nature. Shifting gears a little bit, you know, the, the meeting agendas are thick. It was, it's a big binder. You went through each page. Do you think people go through each page? And what advice would you give someone who says, I don't have to read the whole thing? Then don't run. I mean, don't, well, why are you there? Uh, I would say, yes, some people didn't read it. Some people just whatever the, <laughs> whatever the, uh, the uh, department head wanted or whatever the mayor wanted, they'd go right with it. That's the politics of the city council. If you want to really read it, it takes a long time. Uh, but that's something you have to do if you want to be a successful. I thought what, what you said when we started, you said I was always the most vociferous one, vociferous one. I was <laughs> the most vociferous one. And, and you know, the whole eight years I was on there, nobody ever, nobody ever countered anything I said, which was really interesting. So a lot of people didn't really, didn't really it didn't matter. And I, and I always, what's really interesting to me is I always look at people who are already in office who are running for another office, and I go, how in the heck could they even think about that? Uh, between when you're really in government and working hard, I think it's pretty difficult to run for another office. See, that's what I look at. Um, and so if a person is doing that, I, I wonder, what are they doing in their constituency, you know? Probably not much. What makes a good city council member? Well, I think a good city council member is a person that cares about the city. Uh, and they really want what's best for the city. And uh, they're good at collaboration. Uh, they're good at collaborating with the county, with the housing authority, with HUD, with you know, the different entities here. Uh, they're not arrogant. Uh, they, they're, they're there to learn, because uh, you can learn a lot. It's a tremendous education. If not a job, it's a tremendous education. I, and I think that really, when a, I think it should be a prerequisite to running for mayor. Uh, that you have to be in some kind of governmental role where you understand the issues. Because it was really, when I was on council, it really, you know, we had people who became mayor who had no clue what was going on. It took them probably the whole first term to figure out what was going on. And then by that time, you know, they didn't have a lot of time to, to learn. But it's a, it's a great education. It's a great education in meeting some really great people. And this community has a lot of great people that do a lot of good things. And they don't get much appreciation. The one thing I got to do on council is we got to do, remember, remember those uh, proclamations we gave? We used to give proclamations to a lot of people that did a lot of good things. And would they get excited? I mean, you yes, know, I get excited. <laughs> I would tear up a lot of times. I would tear up because of all the good things they did. We had some tremendous people, people that, you know, we got on committees who would go out and really, we had an education committee in District 1 that kept some really heinous kinds of schools out of our district who were so intelligent that they were they could they could go toe to toe toe to toe with the board of education in fact we have a couple that we got, they got on the board of education it's incredible and those were volunteers that did that for their community so yeah that's the one thing you learn you, you learn to meet some really good people and what was good about giving proclamations is this is thank you from the bottom of my heart for doing what you did. But a lot of times I would tear up because it was so sad. I knew what they did and we had, a lot, you know, the, and a lot of kids support us on the weekends when they would come out and give us a Saturday afternoon and they would go out there and they would, you know, work on medians and, and get rid of graffiti just for a pizza. And you know, that was, that's really cool. Are there people who want to get elected because of the name ID or because it's prestigious? Social, yeah, socially, <laughs> because somebody's pushing them. Yeah, there are, there are people that way, of course there are. And how do you, what do you do as someone who, deep down inside, you wanted to make a change in the community, what do you do when you see people like this in office? Well, you know, the problem is you can't, you can't, it's like what was happening with me on the council is every time there was some, if somebody wanted somebody to go against something, they would always call me and I would say to them, why don't you do it? Why don't you do it? I can't do everything. So it's, it's very difficult sometimes to always be against everything, especially growth and, and air pollution and things like that. But, but the thing is, you know, you, you, know, you, can, you can make a difference uh, and you can, you can make a difference in a person's life 
based, based on the fact that you go and see them at their own home. So many people never saw a city councilman who, who ran and won. And then, you, and then when you go right back to them and they see you and they go, whoa, are, I, don't think I, I don't think I ever missed a community meeting. Uh, not a community, but, a, but a, what I would call, a, it wasn't a meeting, but they would have food and they would have like community, a neighborhood, it was like a neighborhood watch kind of thing. We never missed any of that because people would go, oh, we elected you, but we thought we'd never see you again. Uh, and, and I was proud to have uh, this one group of people who we used to do. We used to do some pretty interesting things, but this one group of people, we used to have a, a sunflower contest every year. Who could build the best sun, or who could grow the best sunflower? And it was in a really nice area, and we could get about 15 to 20 people in the neighborhood who would contribute. Then we'd, we'd give prizes. Uh, they would give prizes. We'd give prizes. Then they'd have a nice big dinner. And uh, they hadn't done it for eight years because I'd been off, out of office for eight years. So they called me and said, Tom, would you like to do it again? Because I was the one that measured the, <laughs> the sunflowers. I'd get, on an, I'd get on a ladder and do it. And it was really nice because it was getting back to the community. You know, you might be a politician, but you're more than that. You're a friend to a lot of people. And that's what you want to do. A lot of people will say, oh, Tom Boyajan just wanted attention. That's why he voted no on anything. What do you have to say about that? No, they could say Tom Boyajian did his work, did his homework. <laughs> I, think I, I think that my saddest part about being on the city council was I never understood how people could vote for the things that they voted for. And that, and that really was that, was, that was the sad part. It was really sad for me to see a developer get his way but not have to contribute much to that development. And the people in my district or anywhere else had to contribute to it. They couldn't even contribute to a school. They couldn't contribute to a, a large uh, pathway or highway or a, a road to it. They couldn't, they couldn't help put a, a money into an off-ramp even though they're going to use that development. That's the saddest part. It's really sad to see people who are really wealthy in this community not bring back to the community except for their developments. If you go to a town like San Jose, you see some great partnership with some of the leaders in that community with, with schools, the city, and things of that nature. It, just, it doesn't happen in Fresno. That's too bad. Election time is around the corner, so are you watching closely or are you kind of disengaged? I, I know three people that are running for city council in my district. I've talked to at least three people, uh, and I've given them what I can give them. And I will vote for one of them, and that's about all I can do. I haven't walked any precincts, uh, but, I, but I surely will vote. And I will, and I believe that you know District One is lucky to have as many people running that they do have. You've been quiet. You haven't endorsed. And do you see yourself in the future making endorsements? I mean, even in your career, you haven't been one that has been always giving your support or endorsement to a candidate. Sevag, it's really difficult because endorsements are what you believe in. Okay, and uh, I've told people that are running for council. You know, do something about the trains. Just do something, you know, get, get, make a quiet zone. It's not very difficult, but do a quiet zone. It does, might cost $100,000, but God, quieten some of the, you know, quiet some of these trains. I wish I would have stayed on the council for maybe two more years. I'd have got that done. But gee, do something for the community. And so a lot of people, you know, their heads are somewhere else. And if you want to endorse somebody, you want to endorse somebody that at least has some of the same thought process that you do. Uh, and stuff, but that you know that, that's hard to find. But no, I've I've endorsed a few people who I thought had the guts to come in and do some things, and and stuff. But I haven't endorsed a lot of people because, you know, I was an unusual candidate. <laughs> I was very unusual. Uh, I stood up for a lot of things, and I wasn't afraid of anybody. It's, it's an interesting kind of concept. Looking back, are you glad you did it? Yeah, I met people like you. Uh, <laughs> I met some really good people, uh, and you never, and that's the good thing about Fresno. We have a really good uh, uh, a bunch of people who, who care about the, about the community. And you get to meet a lot of those people. Uh, not, some of them aren't in leadership positions. Some are just people who are neighborhood watch captains, people that are in the neighborhood. And you get to meet them, and that was really good. I got to meet a great staff. We still have staff meetings, even though we don't, go, <laughs> we don't have policy. We still meet and we still talk about things, and it's so good to see you guys because it's like having kids. And, and I almost feel like I'm going to be a grandfather coming up with, <laughs> with some of the people that work for us because the one thing I did have, and, and I know that it was uh, unusual for most districts, but you guys had to go out there and you had to go out and walk that district yourself 
and, and check and see what was and see what the pulse of that of that district was. And you were one of the ones that did it, and you did a tremendous job. I don't think anybody ever. Everybody said that Sevog is incredible, and I'd say, Are you sure about that? <laughs> because you had the you had the right you had the right mindset, and that's and that was really good to have that mindset. How can people get a hold of you, Tom? I know people ask me all the time, What's that Tom Boyajan up to? How can they get in touch with you? And you're a lawyer now, so how can they talk, find out more about your legal practice? I have an office right across from Bullard High School, uh, and uh, it's at 5528 North Palm 113. If you want to just come by and say hello, come by and say hello. Can they call you? Sure. 233-8935. I get, calls, I get calls all the time from people that say, you know, I knew you from that, or you came by my house, or you did this, or you built that you know, those si sidewalks on our street, you know, and stuff. So, yeah, I, I still get a lot of How that. does that make you feel? Good. <laughs> Makes me feel very good. More Tom, than a million dollars, man. Tom, we can sit and talk to you for hours about the different stuff in the district, but we are out of time this week on the program. Thank you for so much for coming on the program. Thank you. You're, you're always awesome, and you have some great questions, and I wish you the best on your, on your program. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. That's all for this edition of San Joaquin Spotlight. Our guest is... Attorney Tom Boyajian, former city council member representing District 1 of the city of Fresno. Thank you to the volunteer crew that made this and every production possible. Thank you to our audience members listening to 90.7 FM KFSR Fresno and watching us on CMAC. Tune in next week for a new edition.